be seated. And once again, let me echo those words you've already heard. Welcome to everyone. We're glad you're here, especially to our guests, our guests that are uh, with us in the building, and our guests that are watching uh, online right now via Facebook or YouTube. If you are a guest right here in the building, if you've got those attendance cards, if you would pass them to the inside aisle, that would be appreciated so very much. We're going to be continuing our study of the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua is the theme book for next year's Lads to Leaders. And that theme is be strong and courageous, even though the odds may be against you. With God on your side, you can do it. Today we're in Joshua chapter 3. As you turn to Joshua chapter 3, let me remind you that tonight we'll be in Revelation. I won't have time to read Revelation 6 out loud. I'm going to depend on you to read it this afternoon. Please do so. And also uh, grab a bulletin and read that supplemental information on the book of Revelation for tonight's lesson. I have been very honored in the last few months to... uh, develop some uh, teaching contacts with people in India. I have really enjoyed getting to know those people. From India comes this true story from a few years ago. It's on the eastern highways in uh, India. It seems that there was an elephant that was very stubborn. He would not let people pass on the road unless they gave him some food. In fact, he was known to even sometimes through open windows to stick in his trunk and and be searching for hidden treasures, which led led one person, one local resident to say, the actions of that elephant was old-fashioned hold up. Well, aren't you glad that you don't have to deal with obstructions like that around here? Well, yeah, there's an occasional dead animal in the middle of the road. Uh, maybe even a a slow driver, but no elephant sticking his trunk in your car. Even so, there are other kinds of obstacles, hurdles, which will impede your forward progress in life. They certainly will. It could be sickness. It could be difficult people, and people can be difficult at times. It could be discouragement. Or maybe a challenging circumstance which stops you cold in your tracks. Those are the hurdles of your life. So what do you do? What do you do in those times? How do you overcome the obstacles in your life? How do you overcome those hurdles? How do you get past those uh, obstacles which keeps you from moving forward to accomplish what God has called you to do. Let's look at how Joshua handled the Jordan River at flood stage. Verse 1. Then Joshua rose early. He got up early in the morning. And they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan. He and all the children of Israel, and they lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. What's happening? A hurdle is there. It's the Jordan River. But what do they do? They act as if the flooded Jordan River, it didn't exist. They're making plans to proceed despite the raging river right before them. The leaders instruct the people to follow the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the very presence of God Himself. Verse 4, Yet there should be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. What's going on? 
They're to follow the Ark of the Covenant. But even as they follow the Ark of the Covenant, the people are to remain 2,000, that's about 3,000 feet, behind it. Why? I believe it was so all of them could see the Ark. If they crowded too close, then only a few would be able to see the ark. But if they kept their distance, then all would be able to see it and follow the Lord. He see, God himself was going to lead his people. All they had to do, all they had to do was keep their eyes on him so they could follow him. My dear friends, that's the only way to overcome the hurdles in your life. You must what? Concentrate. Concentrate on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him. Focus your attention on God so you can follow Him. A preacher up in Idaho Falls, Idaho, was invited by one of his church members to go out and try out his brand new jet ski boat, a 19-foot boat with the biggest and best motor that came with it. He was excited to try out this boat, and they actually put it in the water on the north fork of the Snake River. Their intention was to, uh, to uh, go to the river and then go up and down the river. Now, the north fork was very low that time of the year. There was a drought going on. There was also a, a lot of irrigation. So they were pretty careful getting the boat in the water. But eventually they got the boat in the water and they got out there and they kind of started opening up. And as soon as they open up that engine and they're going 20, 25, 30, 35 miles an hour, pow, they run into a sandbar. Well, they get out of the boat. Uh, they're standing in water just a few inches deep. Well, how are they going to get out of this mess? Well, luckily for them, uh, a guy came by in another boat. Uh, he was actually, uh, he worked on the river. He was a, uh, a, a fishing guide. He would do uh, fishing groups uh, uh, there on the river, and he would uh, guide them through the fishing. Now, he said, guys, don't worry, I've got equipment here. Uh, we can get your boat back in the water. So they got their equipment, their, their, their chains, their ropes. They started pulling, they started digging, and pretty soon they had the boat back in the water. The fishing guide said, hey, guys, I will take you to the main river. Just be sure to follow me. So they started following the lead boat. And pretty soon they're back up 20, 25, 30 miles an hour. And, and the guy, the, the preacher's friend, he starts with his boat. And he starts going off to the right of the guide boat. And as soon as he does that, pow, again, he's, dealt, he's stuck on another sandbar. The fishing guy, he turns around and comes back. He said, hey guys, I told you to follow me exactly and I would get you out to the main river. Why didn't you follow me? You know, that's what God says to us. God says the same thing to you and me. He says, follow me. God knows the way around or through the barriers of life. So if you don't want to get hung up on them, keep your eyes on God and stay in the path that God has laid out before you. If you want to overcome the hurdles in your life, concentrate on the Lord so you can follow Him. Then, number two, consecrate yourself to the Lord. Dedicate yourself completely to Him. Give yourself wholly over to God. That's what Joshua tells the people to do. Verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Sanctify. Consecrate. If they were going to follow the Lord then they would have to give themselves completely over to Him. God was teaching them to clean out the worldly influences in their lives and to give all their attention to Him. And that's exactly what God tells His people to do today. Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your what? Reasonable service. 
And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. Transformed. Clean out the worldly influences in your life and give yourself to God as a living sacrifice. Jesus said it like this, Mark chapter 8, when he called the people to himself with his disciples also. He said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Deny himself, take up his cross, and what? Follow me. Are we willing to do that? You have to be willing to lose your life for Christ's sake if you're going to follow him. If you've ever watched... A few years ago, one of the launches of the space shuttle, you probably heard uh, NASA control to make this statement. They'll be talking and they'll say, the shuttle has passed the point of negative return. What does that mean, the point of negative return? Well, going to NASA's own official website, the point of negative return occurs when the space shuttle is flying too far downrange and too high to return to the launch site in the event of an engine problem. It also means that for the astronauts, they are now to the point where they are assured of making it into orbit, which is really the whole point of the shuttle launch. My friends... Jesus is saying right here in Mark 8, only by crossing the point of negative return, letting go of the option to turn back, can you actually do what you're meant to do. Whatever your landing site was, what are the things that you were depending on? Your identity, your sense of purpose. Before you came to Jesus, you need to leave all possibility of returning behind. Once you set out to follow the Lord, there can be no option of turning back to the old life. You must reach the point of negative return. You must give yourself completely to Him. Leave the old life behind and and let Him give you a new identity, a new purpose, a new life. Does God have all of you? Think about that question. Does God have all of you? It's the only way you can get to the place that God wants you to be if you want to overcome the obstacles, the hurdles that block you from fulfilling God's calling on your life. You must first concentrate on the Lord. Two, consecrate yourself to the Lord. And three, count. Count on His Word. Depend on God's promises. Listen to what he has to say and believe it. God speaks to Joshua and assures him with a promise. Verse 7. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that I, I, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Depend on God's promises. God assures Joshua of his presence. That's true. And God gives Joshua instructions for the priests. Then what does Joshua do? He turns around and he assures God's people with God's word. Notice verse 9. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here, come here, and hear, hear the word of the Lord your God. He tells them what's going to happen. He tells them what's going to take place. And this is a promise from God. The sign that God will give them the land is that God will stop the Jordan River from flowing as soon, as soon as the priests carrying the ark step into the water. God assures Joshua with a promise. 
And Joshua assures God's people with that same promise. It's the only way they're going to cross the Jordan River and, and conquer the land. They have to do what? They have to believe God. And so must you and I, if you want to overcome the obstacles in your life, those hurdles that you have in your life. This picture is a picture of Jim Davison and Mike Price. It was taken right before they started their climb up Mount Rainier in June of 1992. Their goal was to make it to the top of the mountain. They made it to the top. But as they were coming back down the mountain, tragedy happened. They happened to step on what's called a snow bridge. It wasn't solid. They went tumbling down. They went tumbling down an 80-foot crack in the massive glaciers there. And when they landed, Mike died upon impact. Jim survived the fall. But now he looks up and he's got 80 feet of sheer ice to climb and very little equipment to do it with. After five hours of struggling, he finally made it to the top and was able to make it to safety. Later on, he, he told how he did that. He only accomplished that feat by thinking about his dad. His dad was an over-the-top encourager. His dad believed in Jim. It didn't matter if Jim was standing by the side of the pool trying to learn how to swim. It didn't matter if Jim was at home plate with a runner at third and two out and, and, and up to bat. It didn't matter if Jim was uh, uh, taking on some of his academic challenges. His father would always say, Jim, you can do it. Jim, you can conquer this. Jim, I believe in you. Jim, you are a winner. And with those words echoing through his mind, Jim was able to climb out of that deep hole and make it to safety. I tell that story for one reason. Your heavenly Father has some great words of encouragement for you as well, even better than what Jim's dad had. Those words are found where? Right in his book, the Bible. All you need to do is open it and take it to heart. If you want to overcome the obstacles in your life, first, concentrate on the Lord. Two, consecrate yourself to Him. Three, count on His Word. And then just what? Four, cross. Cross the hurdle of life. Move on with confidence in the Lord. Take that step in the direction that God wants you to go. That's what the people of Israel did, verse 14. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped into the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still. God is doing a mighty miracle for His children. God stopped the waters about 16 miles north of where they were. Notice verse 17. Then the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on what? On dry ground. Not wet ground, dry ground. In the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on what dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. The priest, the priest got their feet wet with their first steps, that's true. But now they stand firmly on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan River while the whole nation crosses over. However, however, those priests had to take their first steps before God stopped the river. God didn't stop the river first, and then they take their steps. They took those first steps themselves, because that's what God had commanded. 
And that's what you must do if you want to see God to remove the hurdles before you. Take those first steps in the direction that God is leading you. Believe in God. Don't wait until all the obstacles are gone. Don't say, well, God, I'll do it as soon as you fill in the blank. Don't wait until you have all the answers. Step out in faith and trust God to make a way for you. Number one, concentrate on the Lord. Number two, consecrate yourself to Him. Number three, count on His Word. And number four, cross the hurdles of life. Take those first steps in obedience to the Lord, and He will make a way for you. I guarantee it. Because God has said so. It's not me talking, it's God. This morning, are you a Christian? Do you believe? Will you repent? Will you confess? Will you be baptized? Those verses there are not my words. Those are the words of Jesus himself. As a Christian, sometimes we don't live our lives as a reflection of who we really are. People can't see the example of Jesus. They can't see the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. We need to seek his forgiveness. And isn't it wonderful that he will forgive, 1 John 1, 9? The church here stands ready to pray with you and for you, James 5, 16. If you have any need to respond, we'll have elders down here waiting for you. Will you please come as we stand and sing for your encouragement?